when we use the term gaslighting, most people talk about it as if it's something that somebody does to me. That's a behavior, an external behavior. The way I work and approach gaslighting is that it's both a behavior that we can potentially recognize in somebody else and it's an experience that happens within me. The reason why this is so important is because that's where the power is. If I can understand that gaslighting is an, is an experience that happens within me, I can begin to look at, well, why does that experience happen in me when this person does this behavior? What causes me to lose my centeredness? What causes me to lose connection to my truth? That's where the authentic power is because I can change that. I can't make the other person stop doing the gaslighting behavior, mm -hmm. right? So Absolutely. It's, both a, it's both a behavior and an experience. So that being said, my definition is when one person or a group of people, right? Institutions, religious establishments convinces another person through covert behaviors that what they believe, think, feel, or perceive is inaccurate or invalid. What's important to understand about this is it happens over time. So it's not the first time somebody says something to me that's gaslighty. Am I going to be like, oh, sure, <clears throat> let me disregard my truth and my perception and my beliefs and take on your definition of how I should be or what I should think. Or It happens over time because of yeah. the various techniques or tactics that people use when they are doing a gaslighting behavior. What types of people or institutions or groups gaslight? Mm -hmm. You mentioned political systems or political groups, um, mm -hmm. religious institutions. Mm -hmm. How about in, in terms of individuals? Yeah. So in terms of individuals, uh, you know, I love that you asked that question. And before I give my answer, I'm going to tell you why I have this answer. Mm -hmm. um, you already said it a little bit, right? Like in my experience, um, as I started working with more clients and, and, you know, the more I got feedback, and, and questions from people. Okay, well, my person doesn't do all of these things, but they still do these things. Am I being gaslit? Is that gaslighting behavior? And I'd be like, yeah, it is. And okay, so here I created a scale to actually help us visualize mm -hmm. how there are different types of people that do gaslighting with different levels of awareness of the behavior that they're doing and different motives. And then also based on when I first started studying this, I was like, crap, I do this to my kids. Not intentionally. I had no awareness that I was invalidating their own emotions. And I didn't really truly understand why. It's an example that I use often. Would you like me to share it, my mm -hmm. insight? So when I was studying this, um, I, I started thinking about my oldest son, who um, was very, very dramatic when he got injured when he was young very dramatic. Mm -hmm. Like you would hear him scream from like the other room and you'd swear he would have broken his arm. And I would come running into the room and like he banged his knee running, you know, cause he's long and lanky and fell in that moment. I didn't, I didn't understand what was happening then, but in that moment I had a re an internal response and my brain made a shortcut cause it wasn't, didn't want to deal with shame. It made a shortcut, didn't know it happened. And my brain told me, I need to teach my child how to manage their emotions. So I came up with an analogy because I love my analogies. And this is back in the day when flat screen TVs first came out. You remember? And they would have that huge back side of the TV and they were so heavy. Like you never moved that thing unless you absolutely had to, right? Yes. So I told him you were act, I said, you're acting like a TV fell on your foot when all you did was step on a pebble. And in that moment, I basically told my son, you are too much. I was convinced I was teaching my son how to manage his emotions so that in other scenarios, he wouldn't, you know, have this dramatic response. As I learned more and more about myself, about what was happening in that moment, I really understood I was having a shame response. I mm. felt like a bad mom because I was working or I was doing this or I was doing that. And my son was running around the house and he fell. And if I had been a better mom and been paying better attention, he wouldn't have fell. So my brain yep. came up with a shortcut. And that shortcut was to make it about his response being too much, which isn't true. He gets to be who he <clears throat> is, right? And I had yeah. no idea that's what I was doing. Yeah. I had no intent to harm my child. Absolutely. Right? I adore my child. So when I started recognizing gaslighting as a behavior, separating it 
from gaslighting as an experience, I now saw that there were so many different options. And so we do have all the way on one side of the scale, the person that might have one of the personality disorders, and they absolutely are gaslighting with full awareness and their intention is to break their person. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have that. Right. And then all on the other side of the scale, you have somebody like me, right? Mm -hmm. Who gaslit my child. I had zero awareness and my intention really was to meet a need. It wasn't um, my deeper need of dealing with shame. It was a presenting need of, I need to teach my child.